Some facts. A great number of letters have been received from Republicans in all parts of the territory asking if Mr. McMaster was really a candidate for delegate to Congress. In answer, we can say that Samuel McMaster is a candidate and the Republicans of the Black Hills are doing all in their power to secure his nomination. Mr. McMaster has declared himself a candidate and the gentlemen who think he is not will be greatly surprised when the committee meets at Pierre. The five counties of the Black Hills will be as one for him in convention. He is the only man qualified for the position from the hills and none but. No other man has done as much for the hills. When Samuel McMaster came here, we had only a placer camp and a few quartz mills that would not pay expenses. He examined our mines, and where others said there was nothing, he invested all the capital he could bring, brought other capital to them, helped the poor men, and has taken out $15 million of gold, and spent $13 million of it in this country in its development and improvement. He has built a railroad in the mountains and operated it successfully 20 miles over cannons and mountains that engineers said a locomotive could not climb. He has given thousands of men employment and everyone has received every dollar that was promised. It is to the clear judgment and great executive ability of Samuel McMaster that the Black Hills owe her reputation. He it was who first said our low grade or would pay and he it is who has planted the gold bricks at the express office twice a month for the last five years as his proof. It has been said by some that McMaster is not a man of ability, and we call the attention of men who do not personally know Mr. McMaster to some of the things he has done that they may judge. The man who can start into the mountain and take out gold enough to build the greatest mills in the world, constructed water ditches and bring in iron and locomotives 200 miles in wagons, and who has paid for all this from the proceeds of the mine and left a profit of $5 million beside, is a man of some ability. The man who can superintend four or five companies at one and the same time, and with such system that he can tell what it costs to mine and mill a pound of ore from any part of the mine, is certainly a man of great executive ability. It is like reading a history of the war and then saying that Grant, Sherman, and Sheridan were not generals nor anyone to look upon the great achievements of Samuel McMaster in the Black Hills and say he is not a man of ability. If the people of Dakota want a talker, a man with a noisy tongue, then they should not send Mr. McMaster to Congress, but if they do want a man of brains, a man of energy and action, a man of wealth and influence, a man who says but little and works with more personal friends in Congress than any other man in Dakota, then they should nominate Samuel McMaster.